morning all. Well I'm looking again at my bicycle generator project and the idea of this is that someone's pedalling away on a bicycle and the uh, power in watts that's being generated will show up on this display and these are LED matrix modules based on the MAX7219 chip and an 8x8 red LED array and I'm driving it from my favourite Arduino, which is the Arduino Nano. Now one of the reasons I like the Nano so much is that you can get these uh, sensor shield boards or breakout boards. You just plug the Nano into the two rows of sockets and then you've got access to all of the signals with ground and VCC lines. The ground is the black pins and the VCC is the red. Uh, which makes connecting up things like potentiometers, like that one there, or indeed the displays, um, relatively easy. Now there are various different uh, types of this sensor shield. This red one has red, black and green uh, connector pins. On my MPPT test rig I've got a blue one here, which I found on eBay, which uh, where all the pins are yellow. And then there's this um, cheap one here. This is only uh, a couple of pounds, um, which is green with all black pins. But they're all essentially the same. They do the same job uh, of just breaking out the pins of the Nano itself. So I got the basic uh, software to generate numbers working on these two displays. But of course I need a lot more of these displays to display longer numbers and the word watts, which is my plan. So here are some more displays that uh, are made up, ready to go. And here I've got a board which I'm going to mount them all on. So uh, I think I can get 10 on here, possibly 12 if I drill more holes. Here are the first three. Uh, they're a bit tricky to mount because the mounting holes are just too close to each other to um, put all the screws in. But if I mount them just on opposite corners with two screws on each module, they fit reasonably well. I've still got the issue of uh, how to wire them up. I don't think there's much point using um, the plug and socket arrangement that I've got here because I'd have an enormous number of wires going from module to module. So I think I'll just get some solid core wire and link these pins to the ones on the back of the next module and so on. But what occurred to me is that when I've got 10, 12 or even 16 of these modules, it's going to be drawing a lot of power. Now, When I first got these uh, breakout boards, I thought that that regulator, the one between the two rows of pins, was a 5 volt, but it's not. It's actually a 3.3 volt. There you are, you can see it there. An AMS 1117 3.3 volts. So on this rig here, where I'm putting 12 volts in on the 2.1 millimeter socket, 5 volts is actually coming from the regulator on the back of the nano board itself. So here's a brand new nano, and if you look at the back of the board, there's the regulator. It's another one of these AMS 117 and this time it's a 5 volt. So that's the regulator that's providing all the power for the display modules in this setup. And it's having to regulate 12 volts, which is what I'm putting in, down to 5 volts. Um, so I need to look at how much current that regulator is able to provide. So here's the data sheet for the AMS1117 and it says it's a one amp low dropout voltage regulator. Now if I come down there are three package types and one of them is the SOT223 and I'm pretty certain that the regulator on the back of the Nano is the SOT223. It looks like the dimensions all seem to tie up. Now it says here that the SOT223 package has a temperature rise of 90 degrees per watt, which would mean that if you're drawing 5 watts, this thing could conceivably get up to about, I don't know, 400 and something degrees, and that's not practical. So I suspect 
that this regulator isn't going to be able to dissipate one amp continuously in the SOT223 package. Now I could just um, throw one of these little LM2596 uh, regulator modules at the project and combined with the breakout board that would provide enough power for all my display modules. But then I spotted this and this is what looks like a nano uh, breakout board with down the middle of the two rows of pins a switch mode power supply and lots of mention of 5 volts. So here's this particular board on eBay and uh, yet again it's from my favourite seller Alice 110-1983. It's a little bit uh, expensive this one, $10.98, £6.54 but uh, that is indeed a 5 volt switch mode regulator there and if you see here there's a switch for switching between sensor 5 volts out and micro 5 volts out. So I wasn't quite sure what it meant by sensor 5 volts out and micro 5 volts out so I've sort of been staring at the back of the board and looking at where all these various tracks from that switch go and essentially what it is is if you put it to sensor 5 volts out so the switch in the top position then it takes 5 volts from that switch mode power supply in the middle of the board there and puts it on all the red pins on the board and if you switch it to the other position it takes 5 volts from the nanos on board analog 5 volt regulator. Now they've done their favorite trick of grinding away the part number of that 8 pin chip but it doesn't really matter it's just a generic 8 pin buck regulator chip and there's a little bit of technical detail in the eBay description, not a, a lot, but enough just to know that it's uh, capable of producing 5 volts at 2 amps. Well, that's fine. That's enough for my displays. Now, I've put 12 volts into the 2.1 mil socket. That red LED top left is also connected to the rows of red pins. When the switch is in the up position, there's 5 volts available from the switch mode power supply. When I put the switch in the down position, then the LED goes off. But what if I put a nano into this thing? So with the nano plugged in on this board, when the switch is up, the red light is on, courtesy of 5 volts from the switch mode power supply. And when I switch it the other way, it stays on because now it's getting 5 volts from the regulator on the back of the nano. Now one thing I noticed when I plugged the nano into this breakout board is that the rows of pins are two pins longer than is necessary for the nano. You have to plug the nano in biased to the left. But those two pins uh, at the end of the rows are actually for a different uh, Arduino. They're for the Arduino Micro. Now I didn't really know much about the Arduino Micro, but um, here on the Arduino website, if we go to products, it's uh, here under boards and uh, there it is. That's the Arduino Micro. Let's just uh, click through on that. So that's the Arduino Micro and it uses the 32U4 microcontroller. Now essentially what this is, is an Arduino Leonardo in a breadboard friendly layout. And the two rows of pins are longer, as I say, than the Nano. There are two extra pins on each side, but they are compatible wherever possible. They've tried to uh, make the same pin appear in the same position. Now, if you search eBay, eBay.com in this case, for Arduino Micro, actually mostly what comes up are Nanos, because the word Micro is fairly generic, but there is an Arduino Micro and this is, once again, from my favourite seller, Alice. Let's take a look. So it's the Arduino Micro. It's fairly expensive. It's $13.99. But it might be worth getting one just to uh, have a play with it and see how it differs from the Nano. But what it means is that um, this compatibility between the Arduino Micro and the Arduino Nano means that this particular breakout board can take either. Now there are just a few things you've got to watch out for because 
the Arduino Micro, uh, in common with the Leonardo, only has six analogs. So there they are, A0 to A5. Um, and you can see that on a board intended for the Nano, which uses the 328P rather than the 32U4, we have eight analogs, A0 to A7. And one other thing, the I squared C lines, there they are, SCL and SDA, on this board are linked through to digital pins two and three, because that's how the micro works, that's how the Leonardo works. On the Nano, they uh, are actually on analog A4 and A5. So you just have to be a little bit careful because a few things are laid out slightly different. But if you did want to do I squared C using this breakout board, of course, there's nothing to stop you connecting to A4 and A5 down on these pins down here. So what I'm going to do now is replace my nano breakout board, the red one here, with my new uh, micro breakout board. Now the screw holes should be in the same positions because these are standard Arduino hole positions. So let's swap them over. And there it is, there's the new board in position with the Nano plugged into it. Uh, potentiometer is connected up and the display module uh, modules are connected up. And if I turn the potentiometer, the number on the display changes. So the program's running fine. Now the little switch on the side of the breakout board is in the up position. Uh, yeah, you can just see that. So I know that the red pins on the breakout board are now drawing five volts from the switch mode power supply. So I've got two amps of current availability there. So I can continue with my uh, wooden board with all my modules on it and uh, build that up to 10 or 12 modules. And I'll have enough current from this breakout board to drive all those modules without worrying about overheating the regulator on the back of the Nano.